Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another lesson in the introduction to auto layout series. And currently our application looks like that over there. And I really hope you've been able to pick up a lot of tips and tricks throughout the first five lessons. And I hope you are going to be able to use what you learned today in your future projects as well. So speaking about today's lesson, let's go over where we left off last time and then we'll talk about what we will be coding today. So last episode, we were able to have our application be a swipeable like this between pages. And that is a really good job that we kind of accomplished there. And what we will learn today is how we can include this little control at the bottom with the previous, these page control dots, and then this next button over here. And clicking on all of these button will cause the collection view to swipe from the left to the right as well as change this dot in the middle and then swiping with the actual collection view will change the dots on the bottom as well so that's kind of where we want to get to and then eventually let me shrink myself down I want to be able to switch up this orientation so that when I spin the controller over to the other side we can shrink all of our views and also continue on swiping like so. So let's go ahead and jump back into Xcode to code up this feature. Alright guys, so back inside of Xcode, here we go. I am currently inside of the swiping controller class file and if we run our application we get something that looks like this and we're missing those controls at the bottom that look like this over here with the previous, the page control, and the next button all the way on the right side down at the bottom. So how can we bring these controls back? Well, if you open up view controller at the very top there, you remember from a couple of episodes ago that we have those controls here with the previous button, next button, and page control. And down inside of view did load, we have this method called setup bottom controls, which is down here. So let me just wipe out those comments, remove that, that, and that. And here's where we are setting up this stack view that places all of those three UI components down at the bottom. So quickly here, let's kind of transfer over these methods and also these guys over here by copying and pasting some of these functions inside of my code here. So comments I do not like, which means I'll just delete them and paste over setup bottom controls inside of my swiping controller which is this controller here. So obviously we don't have these three controls, previous, page control, and next button, which means I will revisit view controller here, and then we will simply transfer these controls over as well. So I will copy all of these and then paste them in here somewhere. And this looks like a pretty good spot for all of that code. Finally, these controls actually need to be set up with setup bottom controls being called inside of viewed it load, which is executed as the first line of you know setting up work that we do inside of this method. And that'll allow us to kind of see our controls again down at the very bottom. So a very good job and a very easy task to accomplish for the beginning of today's video. But, however, as you can see, as you swipe through, you know, these buttons or these dots down at the bottom or up here somewhere, they don't correspond to the exact page that you are on, as well as these buttons not really working. So what do we want to kind of fix here first is this next button. And let's go over to this little control here, bring up the next button. And you know, we can fire off some kind of action if we tap on these buttons by simply adding a target onto button. Let's see, add target of self, and then the action will be pound selector, which you have to define a function to actually call. So we will use something like handle next for the touch event of touch up inside. So this function we simply create down here, make sure to mark it as objective C, paste that function and here you can say private it's a good idea to make anything private uh, that you don't want outside classes to access which is why I'm doing that and here we will simply say print trying to advance to next and then close off that with a parentheses quote 
and we'll get the next button to actually print out this statement down below on line 39. So click on that, we get all of these little statements being printed out in the bottom. So how do we actually advance this uh, little controller or the UI collection view controller so that we see the next page? Well, it's very simple. If you just simply say UI collection view right here that belongs to our uh, controller class, and then we simply type in scroll to item at index path. So I'm gonna declare a dummy index path up here to show you what I have to really do. So this guy will use the item section. Remember, this is for collection views. The row one is for table views. So make sure to use the right one. The item, I will just use the value of one, section is zero, because we only have one section here. And then, let me plug in that index path there. The scroll position, you can use centered horizontally. And then the animation will use the value of true. So how many of you can guess what exactly this is going to do? Well, obviously, you hit the next, it just scrolls over to the next page, which is page one. And then you hit the next button again, you see that it doesn't advance over because we are using what you would call a hard-coded value of 1 for the item. So to get to the actual, you know, varying dynamic value of the next index, we have to do a little bit of logic. So what does this look like? Well, we can say let next index equal to something. And I'm going to use the fact that the page control down here is actually capturing which page I am on. So say page control dot current page. And right now you can kind of see it is at zero, right? So we simply say plus one on it. And next index can be used over here. And it will advance your collection view to the next page whenever you hit that next button. And let me show you what that looks like. So next, next, and next. So you see how that doesn't actually work because whenever we are using the next index, right, this is always zero and this is plus one to that zero, giving you one. That means somewhere down here, page control dot current page is also going to have to reset its index to the next one. And hopefully this is all I need for this little feature to be complete. And hit next, next, next. So if I hit next again, the app will crash. And uh, basically, let me just tell you what that problem is. And so when I get to the third page, I'm trying to advance to the fourth page. And somewhere down here is the index out of bounds error. So attempting to scroll to index path, but it is actually out of bounds because there's only three pages. So what we can do to simply fix this is to apply some more logic to this next index. And so this is a little hard to describe without typing it out first. So I'm going to say pages.count minus one, I believe, and try to run this. So basically this is going to take the max out of one of these values. And I think I actually want min. So let's see, use min. And let's say we start off with a current page of zero at the very beginning. Well, we get one when we hit next, and that's why we get over to the one. And then as we go next, we get to, I believe this is two. And then finally we hit next again. And because we are using pages count as a second parameter in this min call, uh, this is always going to be three minus one, which is two. So it's never gonna go over two. And uh, this is two right here, which means that your application is now kind of good to go in terms of not crashing. Okay, so that's how the next button works. And how do I actually get these dots to be correct? Because I only have three pages. And this right here, page control, you can simply say, let's see, pages.count. And pages comes from this parameter over here, which is an array of pages. And you see, if you try to run this, it doesn't exactly work because it says instance member pages cannot be used on swiping controller. It's a little confusing, but let me just say, let's see, lazy var, and that should do the trick. And when you use a lazy var, you are basically accessing members of your class. So pages are uh, actually accessible. And here we go, we got three dots down here, and you know, make sure you kind of understand how that works. 
otherwise you might be a little confused. So we have three dots and everything looks good except for the fact that the previous button doesn't work. So very similar to the next, I am going to actually do something that is not all that good, but I'll do it anyways. I will copy the next function, paste it right below the previous button, and down here I'll just simply say handle previous, and uh, we'll use this as the target to this button over here, similar to what we did over here, so I might as well copy and paste some more as I'm doing it already, so handle previous does that. And okay, what do I want to do here? Well, you can run, but because previous does the exact same logic as the next guy down here, because we copied and pasted, this will actually go next. So how do I go about fixing this over here? Well, I'm just going to subtract one as I'm clicking on the previous button and change this to max and change this to zero. So I'm not going to explain exactly how that logic worked because you really have to think about it before you can understand it. So just look at this and make sure you can follow what's happening. So I'm going to hit next, next, I'm going to hit back, it goes back to the previous one. So this is one right now for current page, I subtract one from it, you get zero. So you get zero. And then if you subtract zero or one from zero, you get negative one, but max of negative one and zero is just zero. So that means your application kind of stays on page zero, which is this one right there. Okay, so that's good. We have the previous, we have the next working. And all we are missing right now is the ability to swipe to the next page and have these dots over there correspond to exactly which page you are on. Now to make this a little bit more easy and clear, let me just copy and paste three more pages inside of my array so I can get like six pages instead of three. And you see now that our swiping controller is operating on this array of pages, it's very easy to just add things, uh, add things onto this array here. And down here the dots will just simply change to six dots. So let's get these dots to work properly here. And what can you do? Well, somewhere in your code here, I suppose right near view did load because the functions should really belong down here. You can say scroll view and all of these little methods come from the fact that the UI collection view that we're swiping over and over to the right and left like this, this collection view is a subclass of something called a UI scroll view that allows you to scroll things. So if you look down this list somewhere, you have a lot of these methods. So I'm just going to implement this method here with the velocity and the target content offset. So I don't care about the velocity, but it tells you how fast you are scrolling. And the content offset is the useful one. So let me show you what it does first. So x equals target content offset pointy dot x over here. So the way you read this parameter is that it is of type unsafe mutable pointer and inside of that pointer is a CG point value. So this pointy right here gives you that value and you just access the x value on CG points and that's all I'm going to say about that. And the x value pretty much tells you where the scroll view is going to stop dragging or stop the animation of the drag. So I'm going to print out a couple of values here, print x out, and then print out view.frame.width, and then also I'm going to print out x divided by view.frame.width, just to illustrate what the heck is going on inside of this scroll function. So the moment I scroll and let go of the mouse, it's going to fire off this bit of code. So you see, it says 375 for the x, 375 for the width of the screen, and then one for that division value right here. So you scroll over, you get two, you scroll over, you get three, four, five, six, nope, five is the last one. And you see it kind of goes down as you scroll to the left side. So that's how that works. And obviously this value all the way on the right side corresponds to the page number you are on. So this is going to be relatively straightforward by saying current say not current, but page control 
dot current page equals this calculation of x divided by view frame dot width, which is this over here. And uh, I guess I'll just remove that and try to run, but you can't really do this because you need to cast all of this inside of here because this is a float, CG float, you see that? And this is also a CG float, hence the value that you get out of here through the calculation is also a CG float. But current page, you see how it says int, it needs to be set as an integer because pages don't make sense if you use a float value of page 1.4, that doesn't really sound like it makes a whole lot of sense. So we swipe over, you see the dot corresponds to exactly where we are in terms of the page we are swiping on. So that's how you implement the functionality of bringing these controls back and hopefully you see how it works. All right, that is going to wrap it up for today's lesson. In the next video, we are going to talk about landscape orientation and how we can support that functionality. And if you want to learn more about Swift, you can check out the new course that we have out on the website. And that course allows us to learn a whole lot about core data and how we can kind of implement these CRUD operations on our application. For example, if I wanted to create another company here, so let's call this company Uber, I suppose, and use this date picker down here to choose the date for when the company was founded. And then we will hit save and we'll skip the photo for now. You see, we enter these rows for our companies inside of our table view. And then we can also do things like delete like that, perhaps delete everything. And we get these little nice comments inside of this view right here. So it's a very, very good course. I highly recommend it. You can use the link down below to check it out. And if you want to download the source code for today's video, make sure to use the link down below as well. And then finally, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like today. That is it for me. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye guys.